Hello, I'm Peter Okwacha. Welcome to Focus on Africa, our top stories. A BBC undercover investigation sheds light on the African women trafficked to India for sex. In my prayers, I was telling God, let, me, let it be the last thing I'll ever want to do in my life. 33 dead in 24 hours. Armed rebels launch an attack in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Also on the program, the sisterhood hashtag that went viral. Social media praises Miss World Africa for her reaction to Miss Jamaica winning the 2019 Miss World crown. She joins us here. And I will be talking about why Miss World is not just about a woman's beauty. We'll bring, we'll bring you a taste of Gnawa, an ancient form of Moroccan music that's just been honored by the UN. And in sports, Champions League last 16 draw was held today and Liverpool's African stars will be hoping they can retain the title. Thanks for joining us here on Focus on Africa from BBC World News. BBC Africa Eye has uncovered an illegal network that uh, lures women from Africa to India where they are forced into prostitution to satisfy the demands of the many African men living in New Delhi. The women are mostly from Kenya, Uganda, Nigeria, Tanzania and Rwanda. One brave woman, Grace, who was trafficked from Kenya, agreed to go undercover for BBC Africa Eye. I'm Grace. I'm a singer. I'm a musician, I'm a dancer, and I'm an actress. I want to become famous and have a good life. Grace saw a post in a friend's WhatsApp group offering work in India. Hearing that it's good money, I went for it. I decided, okay. But when she arrived in New Delhi, Grace was taken to a brothel and had her passport confiscated by this woman, Goldie. She paid for Grace's travel to India Goldie said Grace now owed her almost 4,000 US dollars, more than seven times the actual cost of a ticket to India. There was only one way to pay off the debt. A prostitution for me is something that I had said an ex to. In my prayers, I was telling God, let, me, let it be the last thing I'll ever want to do in my life. For five months, Grace lived in this room with four other trafficked women. Very many times we would we'd bring plants in the house or you go to hotels. Grace agreed to wear a hidden camera and take us inside the brutal world of an African Indian sex ring. It's okay, I'm good to go. All right. The women were turned out to solicit men in local pickup bars known as kitchens. These are illegal clubs set to cater for the many African men who live and work in New Delhi. Grace pointed out the man who she knew as being at the heart of the sex trade in her area. This was chairman. His name is Eddie, and he is the local leader of an organization called ASCA. It's a nationwide community group offering social activities to connect and support Nigerian students studying abroad. During our investigation, Eddie offered to help Grace import a woman from yeah. Kenya to India. How are you? I'm good. Grace pretended to be interested. What's the process of bringing a girl? You know, I don't know anything. Oh, I don't give money to agents or to the girl. I give to agents. You know, as much as the person is coming to Nairobi, agents will give passport, even the best certificates. Okay. This is how the network grows. Women pay off their debts as sex workers and then, with no other employment options, start operating as madams. With the evidence gathered by Grace, we confronted Eddie. Eddie! Hi, how are you? Good. My name is Nyasha Kadandara. I'm from BBC Africa Eye. We have evidence against you and we want to talk to you about the sex trade that you are involved in. Sex trade? Does Asko know what you're doing? This is 
So you're a proud member of ASCA, so ASCA knows that you are entrapping and exploiting women for sex I don't work. do that. Right? Are you sure? Sure, 100%. We have evidence against you. We have evidence of you saying that you are going to process women, that they're going to come from Kenya to India for sex work. You can show me the evidence. In we do. We have it right here. This is a right of reply for you to come and respond to BBC. We look forward to hearing your response. All right. We contacted Eddie Anide three times. He denied trafficking any woman from Kenya to India. Goldie gave no response to our allegations of trafficking and brothel keeping. Africa Eye helped Grace to return to Kenya where she is now rebuilding her life. So good, so good. Nyasha Kadandara, BBC News, Nairobi. And if you want to learn more about Grace's story and the investigation the Africa Eye team carried out in Delhi, you can watch the full investigation online at bbc.com slash news. You can also let us know what you think at BBC Africa. Let's take a quick look now at other stories making the headlines across Africa and the rest of the world. The United States has imposed sanctions against two ministers in South Sudan, accusing them of obstructing efforts at peace and reconciliation for their personal enrichment. A statement by the U.S. Treasury said the behavior of the defense and cabinet affairs ministers caused much suffering for the South Sudanese people. Liberia has closed all state-run schools until the beginning of 2020 as teachers and other workers begin a nationwide strike over delayed pay. The Education Ministry feared for student safety without any adult supervision. 77,000 civil servants in the country have begun an indefinite strike. The UN Security Council is meeting for a briefing on violent extremism in West Africa. Militants linked to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State group have killed more than 230 soldiers in the region over the last four months, despite the presence of regional and international troops. And Mali's former leader, who was ousted in a coup in 2012, has returned to the country after living in exile in neighboring Senegal. Amadou Toumani Toure was met by large crowds at the airport and outside his home on Sunday. He was president for 10 years from 1992 after taking over from years of military rule. Let's go to the Democratic Republic of Congo now, where armed rebel attacks have killed 33 people within a 24-hour period. It happened in the region of Beni, and that's the uh, latest in a series of attacks across the area. Suspected militants from the Allied Democratic Forces, or the ADF, an Islamist-rooted militia that originated in Uganda, are believed to be responsible. Our reporter Louise de Wast has more. Civil society says that militants last night went door to door, killing civilians inside their homes. The number of attacks in eastern DRC has significantly increased since October, when the army launched an offensive against the ADF, the Allied Democratic Forces. It's unclear exactly what this group's agenda is, but these attacks could be retaliation uh, for this offensive that was launched uh, recently by the army. A local human rights group says that more than 200 civilians have been killed since October. On Friday, President Felix Chisikedi said in his State of the Nation address that almost all of the ADF sanctuaries in eastern DRC had been destroyed, that more than 200 fighters had been captured, but clearly it was wasn't enough to stop the violence. And this surge in violence in the area is also uh, making things very difficult for those, for health workers in the region who are trying to stop the spread of an Ebola outbreak. The estranged wife of Zimbabwe's vice president has been remanded in prison after she was denied bail at a hearing today. Mary Chimwenga was arrested on Saturday over fraud charges totaling around a million dollars and was also charged with attempting to murder her ailing husband. Well, our Zimbabwe correspondent Shigai Nyoka joins me now. Shigai, this story has captured the imagination of Zimbabweans. Why is that? 
Absolutely, and it's because um, this court case gives a rare insight into the lives of the rich and the powerful, the elite of Zimbabwe. I mean, you talk about the fraud charges. Um, she's alleged to have externalized close to a million US dollars. And what that means, or what the court is saying, is that she transferred uh, money under pretense uh, to South Africa, um, saying she was going to buy um, certain goods for importation for her business and allegedly um, use that money to buy um, a house as well as a Range Rover. Uh, but I think the most spectacular charges here is that the vice president himself um, has accused her of trying to kill him when he was in a South African hospital. But um, I, I think the major issue, the major take home here is that uh, Zimbabwe is facing this economic crisis. Um, you know, many businesses have been unable to get foreign currency. But um, if this is true, it shows just how easily uh, the rich and the power have access to resources this that are scarce not foreign currency because there is some precedence to this. I mean, uh, Grace Mugabe at one point as, as well moved large amounts of money allegedly out of the country and, 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 it, and it went to court. It's to buy an engagement ring or to buy an anniversary ring uh, to mark her anniversary uh, to Robert Mugabe. And, um, and, and these are the court cases that really bring to the fore um, some of the, 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 the issues of um, alleged corruption uh, with these high ranking officials. Now, I mean, the government says it is trying to fight this corruption. This case involving Mary uh, being one of the, 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 the examples that they give. Uh, but is there any faith in the government that they're actually going after the right people in the right way? Well, this is a test, and uh, this court case has divided Zimbabweans. Uh, some people claim that um, because uh, they, he was, she was estranged uh, with the vice president and that they were going through an acrimonious split, uh, that this court case uh, was, is used to settle uh, their own personal matters. Uh, but this really is a test uh, to Emerson Manangagwa's government. He has said that he wants uh, to tackle corruption without fear, without favor. Uh, we've seen ministers arrested uh, on corruption charges but uh, there's also a syndrome that Zimbabweans describe as catch and release mm -hmm. um, so they want to see um, whether these aren't just optics uh, they want to see some of these high-powered um, officials charged uh, convicted and jailed okay Shinga Nyoka always good having you here on the program thank you very much thank you now, this is Focus on Africa from BBC World News with me, Peter Okwacha. Still to come, Mimi with the sport. Kenya's Eluid Kipchoge picks up the 2019 BBC World Sports Star of the Year. I'm Peter Okwacha. The top stories this are. A BBC undercover investigation has exposed the plight of African women trafficked to India for sex. Unarmed rebels in the Democratic Republic of Congo have killed 33 people within a 24-hour period. Now, there are pictures that have gone viral. Miss World Africa's reaction to fellow competitor Miss Jamaica winning the Miss World contest. It's been seen by many as a true display of camaraderie and it's been doing the rounds on social media with the hashtag sisterhood. Well, earlier today, I met uh, Nyekachi Douglas, that's Miss World Africa, and asked her what was going through her head when she heard her friend had won. When we went on stage, we were literally both like, I was just like, just say it, just say it, just say it. And I was like, ah! And you know, sometimes you forget that you're on a stage. And I was just so, I was consumed with excitement. I forgot that I was in a world stage and right after it happened I was like oh my god <laughs> but, but I think it's, it's that I I instinctive reaction that got the whole world talking about you you know the hashtag sisterhood was trending Aww. you know I I how did that make you feel that you know what I'm very very detached from my phone and I haven't really been paying attention to like what's going on on social media because I'm honestly just like still trying to believe that I made top five, that I miss World Africa. And that seemed that it's amazing. And that's the kind of thing that I really want to see in the world. I really want to see people like standing up for each other, supporting each other. People don't really understand that Miss World is not a place to compete with each other. It's a place to empower each other. It's a place to walk hand in hand and make each other see reasons why they need to do things right on, or better ways that they could better themselves and improve yourself rather than make you feel little. Like coming there, I thought, okay, I have to win this. But when I got there, I saw the rest of the ladies, the way they work, the way they spoke, the way they talked to us, and the way they put us together. I 
I understood and I got to the realization that this is a union of amb national ambassadors. There seems to be some sort of a trend going now with uh, beauty pageants. So Miss World was from Jamaica. Uh, a week ago, Miss Universe from South Africa. Miss America is, is also a black lady. Miss Teen America is a black lady. You, you know, why are people feeling this black love right now? I, to be honest, I don't think it's more about the race. I think that these ladies have achieved these crowns that they own. And Miss Wall is not just about, oh, she's black and she's won it. It's more like, yes, there's been times when black people haven't really been shown in the industry, but now, not that, okay, she's black and she's won. It's more like these people have worked hard for it. She's not a representation of just black women. Yes, she has represented the black ladies around this world and shown us that we too can have the crown, but she's also a representation of every single kind of female, the black, the, the skinny, the tall, the curvy, all the kind of women they are in this world is just showing the rest of the world that we have something that cannot be taken, that cannot be hidden. We have a bright light and you can really cannot put a lantern on the couch that's gonna burn up. So that's just what they are. They're just representations for those strong women that we have. And it's kind of, we're trying to take the power back. We need to show them that, I mean, why can a man do everything with a woman and just, why can't we live with them? So it's like, we are here. That's just what this is. It's more. Be a it's interesting. You, you talk about power. You talk about leadership. You know, there's some people who would argue that. Well, you know, actually, uh, a beauty pageant is not necessarily where people should, women should go and show their power mm. or their grace. Or you know, there are people who say, listen, beauty pageants. You know, I mean, they're a throwback from the past. They should, you know, they shouldn't be happening again in in, in this day. A beauty pageant, first of all. It's not a place where you come and show your beauty. This is a union. We are coming there to learn how we can better this world, how we can speak up for the ladies that cannot be spoken for, how we can raise our hands for the communities that cannot raise their hands. Miss Wall says beauty has a purpose and it's wasted if you're not using the true purpose of the beauty. So this is not for just to show, oh, I'm beautiful and I have a nice waistline. It's more to show that I can advocate for somebody and I can do it well. Tell you what, she's got a very infectious personality. You're watching BBC Focus on Africa. It's now time for some sport. Another person with a great personality. I mainly. was going to say that, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. The draw for the Champions League last 16 took place today in Nyon, Switzerland. And some interesting ties to look out for in the knockout stages. The pick of the ties sees holders Liverpool with their African stars who will face Atletico Madrid, who were finalists in 2014 and 2016. The other game to look out for is Algeria international Riyad Mahrez's Manchester City who were drawn against 13 time winners Real Madrid the trophy remains elusive for City but for Real Madrid they have won three out of the last four the final will be held on the 30th of May in Istanbul Tottenham Hotspur under Mourinho will be facing RB Leipzig but for now the German side are focusing on their match against Borussia Dortmund in the Bundesliga it's an exceptionally good team with incredibly good pace and a great playfulness in offence. They also have a clear idea whether they play a 3-4-3 or a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-1. They're variable there and they'll also be able to react if something doesn't go their way. But that's normal for a top team, spiked with highly talented players like Mats Hummels, who's been in the business for a long time. He has incredible experience. It's a great squad and they'll demand a lot from us tomorrow. There's one English Premier League fixture is taking place today. Crystal Palace hosts their fierce rivals, Brighton and Hove Albion. That kicks off in almost two hours' time. One of the players that Palace will have to do without will be Ghana international Jeffrey Schlupp. But for their manager, Roy Hudson, it's an important match for him personally, as it will be his 100th game in charge. They're currently 10th in the table with Brighton in 13th position to the FIFA Club World Cup, where over the weekend, Tunisia's Esperance were beaten by Al-Hilal 1-0, missing out on a spot in the semi-final. The winner was scored by former Swansea player Buffettimbi Gomez. Esperance will now play the fifth place playoff on Tuesday against local champions Al Saad. They have this summer's Africa Cup of Nations winner Baghdad Bunaja. 
We did all that we could and what the coach demanded from us, but that's what football is like. One day you win and one day you lose. Like you saw, we played and uh, gave what we could and we have to thank our fans because they came from far away, so we are sorry for them. But hopefully in the next game, uh, we can give them uh, something to smile about. And to athletics, it's been a great year for Kenya's Eliud Kipchoge, hasn't it? With running a sub two hour marathon, and he obviously isn't done yet, breaking records, as he says, he will now aim to become the first person to win the London Marathon five times in April next year. On Sunday, he was named the 2019 BBC World Sports Star of the Year. To, to, to actually see that. Uh, another man being can, can run under two hours. So it has been actually the, the narrative that uh, uh, until uh, the 2067, when uh, a human being will run uh, under two hours, then I proved them wrong by running, uh, by breaking the two-hour barrier in Vienna. So it means that uh, uh, no human is limited. We need to actually to remove uh, our limitations in our minds, be it in class, be it in our offices, and life will continue. I love that, Peter. No Absolutely. limitations, just on our minds, really. Great man, great man. <laughs> just like me. <laughs> now, Ganawa is an ancient form of Moroccan music which traces its roots to former slaves from sub-Saharan Africa. It was once practiced by exclusive groups, but it was popularized by a festival that started in 1997 in Essaouira. It has now won inclusion in UNESCO's list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity. Of humanity rather. Marina Daras reports. In a riot of color, acrobatics and drum beats, Morocco's Gnawa artists joyously celebrated the inclusion of the ancient art forms in the UNESCO cultural heritage list. Troops of artists in traditional costumes paraded through the white and blue citadel town of Essaouira in southern Morocco, the sound of the lute strings and still castanets filling the streets. شباب كثير وناس ناس كثير كثار اللي اللي ولاو كيحبوا هاد هاد Many youth and people today love Gnawa hearts not only as music but also as a philosophy. They have noticed the evolution of the Gnawa which was marginalized but has become well known thanks to events such as the Essaouira Gnawa Music Festival. The music opened its door to the international scene. يعني مع هاد التظاهرات بحال المهرجان ديال ديال الصويره ديال الكناوا وتظاهرات اخرين اللي اللي حلوا الابواب Gnawa culture is a centuries-old Moroccan practice rooted in African rituals, Sufi traditions and music played with the gambri, a type of lute with three strings and still castanets called croquebs. The tradition, which includes the veneration of Islamic holy men, dates back to at least the 16th century and combines ancestral African practices, Arab, Muslim and Berber influences. It is a series of songs, dances, music, musical sequences that absolutely had to be recorded, transcribed and protected. Throughout the years, we have unfortunately lost great masters who are guardians of the temple, who are the keepers of this oral tradition, and who, by leaving us, have taken with them a whole part of this tradition and heritage. The picturesque port town of Essaouira attracts waves of fans each year from across the globe to the Gnawa and World Music Festival. Enthusiasts said the UNESCO listing is a recognition of Essaouira's pioneering commitment to a community that was long marginalized. Great music, isn't it? That report by Marina Danis. Now, don't forget, you can get in touch with me and some of the team on social media, including parts of my interview with Miss World Africa that we didn't bring to you on the program. I'm at Okwache. But for now, from the rest of the Focus on Africa team, thanks for watching. See you again very soon.